Welcome to video 198 in series 3 and it's now time to edit various scripts so that the vehicle system can be implemented and uh, this is probably one of the more silly video titles I've probably made. Okay, anyway, let's keep going forward. Now the first script I'm going to edit is Game Manager References. So it stores a reference to the player but it tries to find the player as well. And this is going to be a problem. So first of all, I'm going to add a new variable, and it's called public game object player geo. Now I don't want it to search for the player anymore. This is going to be a problem by doing it this way. Once, it, like, if the player is in the vehicle, then that will, f well, obviously, it's going to throw up a problem, and the wrong thing is going to be sent as the player to this script, and I uh, definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm actually just going to drop the player in uh, to as a as a reference on this script in the inspector, and then it's going to just get be set by code. So I'll save that, jump back to Unity, go over to the game manager. Have a look at the uh, references script. There we go. Just drop in the player. That's that. And you can quickly just run it. You'll see that there's no issue. All right. Oh, and that's just me. I just pressed O. It's my test button for game over. Uh, I just have a bad habit of pressing that instead of the inventory key. And that's the next thing I need to edit, which is the game manager toggle inventory UI. So obviously when the player is in the vehicle and you press your inventory button, uh, the inventory shouldn't show. So I'm just going to add a new condition. So go to the method check for inventory UI toggle request. And inside of that largish its if statement, I just add in there another condition and game manager references dot player dot active self so that means the player isn't in the car and they're just walking around in the world and that's appropriate okay now the next script i need to edit is a player script it's the player canvas hurt so it can do funny stuff now if i don't edit it it's possible to you know have your canvas hurt appear the player gets in the car when they get out it still appears and it doesn't go away so I need to uh, just make a edit to this to add a new method so I can use this bit of code more often. And that is hide, so void hide hurt canvas. Inside of that write hurt canvas dot set active false. All right, so now I'm going to call this method. And the first place will be right here. I'll just delete this uh, bit of code right here, which is it's the same thing. But I'm just going to put in the method name, that's cleaner. Because I need to use it as well up above. So inside on enable, after set initial references, put hide hurt canvas. So what will happen is when the player jumps out of the car, they're re-enabled. So remember when they jump into the car, I told you that they go in the cabin, which is a disabled game object. And that causes on disable to be called all over the place on the player. And when the player jumps out of the car, on enable will be called all over the place. And so if the canvas was on when the player got into the car, it would stay on. So by doing this, the canvas will be turned off and uh, there won't be any awkward behavior. Now I'm not done here. There's something else I want to change as well. I would like to alter the void turn on hurt effect uh, method. Now currently, uh, any old explode from any old thing, uh, destructible object can cause the canvas to turn on, even if it's a zero uh, hurt amount. So I just want to edit that because it was a bit silly. Um, once I was starting to see it, I didn't quite like it. So the, the solution is very, very simple. And that is to enclose uh, this bit of code inside of that. So I just changed that to dummy. It's no longer dummy because I'm actually going to use that value. It's now called int damage. And I'm just checking that if damage is greater than or equal to one, then look at this code. So that will avoid all the uh, um, exploding things that uh, don't actually apply any damage to the player. 
uh, because the damage amount to whatever I set it as is really low. I just want the object to blow up. So um, that'll just avoid the ca canvas, the hurt canvas coming on. Okay, and the last script uh, that I want to edit with respect to this uh, base stuff is a uh, player script, the uh, player inventory script. Uh, so what's going to happen is whatever the player has in their hands, it won't be cleared, so it'll still be there. So when they jump out um, of uh, the vehicle again, another object will appear in their hands. So they'll have two things. Right, so the solution is really, really quite simple. All I need to do is on disable is to just call clear hands. And this will ensure that the player's hands are cleared of whatever they're carrying. And it's put it back into the inventory. And uh, that's it. So when they jump out of the vehicle again, then this method check if hands empty will be called. And uh, yep, and then something will be put in their hands, whatever the last item is uh, in their inventory or something like that. Anyway, so uh, I think that's about it. Let me just save it. And I'll just do a quick run here to save everything. Jump in. And uh, yeah, pretty sure everything will be just fine. Yep, this is pretty small changes anyhow. All right. So, uh, okay, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. And we'll do a few more edits um, in the next video. I believe the next video I'm going to edit some of the NPC scripts. Alright, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.